Concerned about dating? Concerned about your significant other or how to find a meaningful relationship to begin with? Well, you're in luck. The millennial love expert is here. And uh, relationship counselor, dating coach, Samantha Burns joins us live to talk how to love successfully. Uh, Samantha, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to you as well. It's great to have you with us, and I know that uh, you deal with love on a daily basis, right? You are the love experts, especially when it comes to millennials, so I'm sure you've seen a lot. Right out of the gate here, can you share with me uh, what what made you get involved with the love business to begin with? What uh, what interested you in that? Sure. So I've always loved love, and <laughs> I just really recognized early on that relationships, specifically romantic relationships, just bring us so much joy and so much misery when they're not going well. So I actually am a licensed therapist. I have my master's in counseling psychology. I have a private practice in the Boston area and I work with couples and individuals all around the country, um, sometimes on video as well, doing, um, doing work around increasing the relationship satisfaction, dating and breakup concerns. It sounds very rewarding, and I was wondering if you could tell us, how are millennials different? Because we see things written about millennials every day as to how different we are in almost every capacity. How, how are millennials different from other generations? Um, sure. what, what, what makes them tick when it comes to love? So I'm really excited, actually, because last week, some amazing data was released by the annual match.com survey, which looks at about 5,500 singles across the country, and they dedicated an entire section to millennials. So as of last week, we know a lot more about what makes millennials unique in regards to love and relationships. And so one piece of data I'll share with you is that millennials are 30% more likely than any other generation to want a relationship this year. And if you think about it, that makes sense because millennials uh, range in age from about 18 to 35. So developmentally, biologically, they're really at a point in their life where finding a romantic partner is going to be their number one goal. And in fact, millennials are 177% more likely than other generations to feel overwhelming pressure to get married. Um, We're told that we need to settle down, get married and have babies, but we're doing things a little differently than in past generations because we're actually waiting longer to get married. We're more focused on our career goals. We are uh, paying off financial debt from student loans. And we're really, I like to think of ourselves as a generation of soulmates. And so what I mean by generation of soulmates are that we're not just picking anyone to marry so that we can move out of mom and dad's house or buy our own home or have a baby. Instead, we're really trying to find that perfect partner for ourselves. So we're seeing a trend of cohabitation where we're living together longer before marriage. And that's really great because it gives us a chance to test out a relationship, see if this person is really the one. And if not, the relationship isn't going to work out. And that's okay because you don't have to deal with the legality of marriage. But if it does work out, hopefully it means that we're going to see higher quality of marriages, longer marriages. And ultimately, I'm really optimistic that, you know, millennials will be known for having those great, strong, long marriages. So that's a little bit about how they're different from other generations. And when they do dive into these relationships, what is it that millennials overall seem to be looking for? You touched on a few things there, but I'm interested to, to hear from you, the expert, uh, what it is we're looking for exactly uh, when it comes to relationships. Sure. So I think that's obviously very specific to the person um, that, you know, where when I say that we're really a generation of soulmates, I think that that means that we're dating with more intention. We're being more strategic about trying to find someone that's not just surface level. That's, you know, you can have great sex or good physical chemistry. You could have superficial things in common, like the music you like or your group of friends. And that's all great. But I think we're being more intentional by finding people that we align better on with big picture core values. So things like, do you want kids? How do you manage your money? I mean, student debt is a real issue that's Mm. going to impact people's ability to buy homes and kick off marriages in debt. So we're really um, financially savvy and looking to find other people who manage their money well. There was actually a study that found that millennials um, rate financial responsibility 
as basically more important than sexual prowess. Wow. And so I think that's really telling that we're looking for, for people who are um, not just better with their money, but also ultimately who are more responsible. And when it comes to those types of roadblocks there, you know, you mentioned financial being a huge burden uh, on a lot of people thinking about starting relationships. What would you say are some of the setbacks, uh, some of the big roadblocks outside of the financial sector uh, to finding love as a millennial? Sure. So millennials are 57 percent more likely than other generations to have created profiles on a dating app. And I think this is really important because smartphones and dating apps have only been around for the last decade. So millennials are really these early adopters. And we've incorporated the apps into our daily life as a normal way to interact and potentially meet people. Whereas other generations, this is a newer approach to finding love. But interestingly, millennials are 22% more likely to feel that technology has made finding love more difficult. Mm. So as much as technology has been helpful in bringing people together, it's also being overused and is really a roadblock to love. You know, the nature of swiping apps is addicting. I compare it to Candy Crush since people (laughs) treat it like a game or an ego boost with many people um, using apps like Tinder and Bumble, which are apps where you swipe right or left on and that activates the reward center in your brain releasing dopamine a neurotransmitter that's like a hit of pleasure so basically you become trained to swipe over and over seeking that high every time and i say hi every time that you match with someone um so the more matches the bigger the boost of that feel good chemicals similar to the effects of drugs or gambling so you're left craving more which might explain why a lot of millennials can't seem to put their phones down. And in fact, millennials are 125% more likely to admit that they're addicted to the process of making a love connection than other generations. So technology is a huge roadblock. And something else that I think is a roadblock is what I call the grass is greener mentality, which is basically FOMO. It's the fear of missing out on the potential to meet someone better. So dating apps have made it so easy to come into contact with potentially thousands of other people, but rather than committing to a casual relationship that has real potential, I see millennials getting back online, swiping rather than developing emotional intimacy with the person that they are seeing. Um, And so tied to that roadblock is also, I think we're inundated with such desirable dating choices that this can lead to really poor dating etiquette. So such as the phenomenon of ghosting, which is when you disappear without a word or an explanation uh, with the person that you've been talking to. And this really leaves singles disheartened and more likely to bring in kind of a cynical dating mentality or wasting their energy that could be better invested back in the dating market. So we're really seeing all of these roadblocks come up around technology issues. I feel like a lot of my friends have become quite cynical when it comes to love. You know, those that can't find the relationships uh, in a more consistent way or, or even uh, through longevity. You know, those folks that are having trouble uh, locking down a relationship, I know they become quite cynical when it comes to just the idea of love and um, they're over it to a certain degree. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. And I think that especially on a day like today where everybody is sort of flaunting their love in the faces of other people, you know, on social media and whatnot, it's hard to really uh, hunker down and say, man, I'm so grateful for being single uh, because you're surrounded by everybody else's love and how grateful they are for it. Right. So it's, um, you know, they joke it's Singles Awareness Day. Right. agree that kind of to counteract that negative mentality and attitude gratitude is such a great practice to kind of say well just because i might not be receiving the romantic love i want how can i show other people love whether that's my parents whether that's um friends or someone that you're interested in pursuing so kind of taking the action and power back into your own hands rather than sitting there kind of hunched over thinking, whoa, it's me, no one loves me. Um, kind of saying, well, I can show other people love on this holiday. And what we know through research is that when we express gratitude or even when we volunteer or do good for others, it actually in turn significantly reduces depression and makes us feel happier. That is 
terrific advice. Uh, yeah. And, you know, it's like, stop being narcissistic for a minute. Stop being all about yourself. There, there is love to give. You don't have to receive it all the time. So I, I appreciate hearing something like that. Good. Uh, tell me, you know, what's your advice, being this expert, uh, what's your advice to someone who wishes to love successfully, especially on a day like today, uh, that may be looking for a relationship? What would you tell them? Sure. So we know that millennials do want to be in relationships. And in fact, 57% actually report being lonely. Mm. So despite all the ways nowadays that we know we can connect, whether it's social media or dating apps, we're, feel, we're still feeling really disconnected from each other. So I say it's time to get back to the basics and interact with people without technology. So putting your phone away, making eye contact, smiling, and saying hello, it sounds trivial. It is that simple. You really want to give others the green light signal that you won't reject them when they approach you. So it's about being more approachable through your nonverbal body language and behaviors. And then I also think you know, dating successfully really requires self-awareness and reflection. So ultimately, if you don't know what you want and how you want to feel about it, you'll never know if and when you have it, no matter how many people that you date. So you can't gain clarity in your love life without digging deeper to explore things like your core values, your life goals, your love lessons from past relationships so that you can have a better sense of who will be a good match. You know, with every date and relationship experience, you should become a smarter, more intentional dater when you put in that effort to really self-reflect on your actions. And so finding a match, as you say there, it's different now than it's ever been. The digital landscape has changed everything uh, from the way we approach love to dating to, to hookups. Can you tell us uh, how exactly it's changing things and, and what you've seen from your perch uh, as the millennial love expert? Sure. So I mentioned before about that grass is greener mentality, which is when people are almost over inundated and fear commitment because they want to see who else is out there. But I've also really seen kind of the digital landscape impact us in a negative way in the sense of I think so many people hide behind a screen yep. and we're almost dehumanized a bit in our romantic interactions because you used to have to let someone down face to face or at least make a phone call. Whereas nowadays we communicate through text and social media and emojis or even worse, we ghost. And I think that that is definitely kind of a negative way that technology has been impacting our hookup and dating and love life. So in this digital age, would you say romance is dead? So I'd like to think no, but I think it depends on how you define romance. If you're talking about sending flowers and planning great dates, I think millennials are slacking. Instead of dates, they're doing Netflix and chill, or instead of flowers, <laughs> they'll send a silly meme or a cat video. So of course, with technology, you can stay in more direct contact and easily communicate more frequently. But I think we need to bring back that old school romance, which ultimately requires spending more quality time in person. I think, you know, where we're hindered on that is that many millennials are extremely career driven and focused and they're working 24 seven, especially with the expectation that with smartphones, they should be available at every beck and call. But this means it's harder to transition out of work life into personal life and setting boundaries to really prioritize a partner or someone that you're courting is more challenging. Yeah, that's for sure. And uh... I feel like in this day and age, you know, you mentioned there, you say with so much opportunity with the, the digital landscape and so many ways to connect, you, you say that we're feeling more alone than ever before, that statistically we're feeling quite lonely. And on a day like today, I feel like I have these friends that continue um, to preach how much they, they want this love, they want this relationship, they want this desire. What can you tell someone right now who is down in the dumps, um, who feels like there is no hope? And, and I know that, you know, you referenced just a few minutes ago that, you know, you can give love too, but in approaching something like a relationship from the perspective of somebody that's sort of bottomed out, because I, I know that loneliness can hit hard, that depression factor, right, can really hurt people. Um, how would you say a day like today on Valentine's Day, uh, do you think that this might be a good day for individuals suffering through that depression and suffering through that hurt uh, to jump back in the game or to at least 
try to reach out there to start loving again? Sure. Well, I think ultimately people just have this vision that love will find them or that Prince Charming will fall into their lap. And the reality is, if you're doing dating right, it's going to feel like a part-time job. It requires time and effort and energy. And so, you know, I think a lot of it is going to be about maintaining a positive attitude and kind of optimistic mindset in the face of what I call like a micro rejection. So a real rejection could be being dumped, but it could be a micro rejection could be more so someone doesn't message you back online or the person no shows on their first date with you. And these can really make you feel disheartened and jaded about dating. So some of the, the shift on Valentine's Day that I hope people see and that I work with my clients on is having a more positive mentality and realistic dating mentality, which means that not every person that you walk by on the street is going to be attracted to you. Because think about it, when you walk down the street or in, enter into a bar or your gym class, you're not attracted to everyone else. So not taking the attraction and physicality piece as um, detrimentally, as well as realizing that no one has a crystal ball. So we can't tell you exactly when you're going to meet that right person or the one that we, d I do know that if you're not taking advantage of windows of opportunity to connect with people on a regular daily basis, then you likely won't meet anyone anytime soon. So a lot of it is empowering yourself to say, I have to break out of my routine. I have to put myself out there. I have to continue dating even in the face of these micro rejections that might hurt or make it hard so that you know, you put yourself in a situation where you really are saying yes to new social opportunities. You're meeting friends of friends or social networking. You know, whether or not you're doing online dating or meeting people organically, I think you can meet people in both situations, but it's really about the effort and energy that you're putting behind it. So today on Valentine's Day, if you're feeling disheartened or moping around, I think it's really about getting your mindset and mentality in check. I love that message of empowerment. Thank you for that. Uh, in your time studying and counseling millennials through love and relationships, is there anything that you've noticed, uh, like trends, for example, that have surprised you? So I think one thing that I've seen actually is a breakup trend. And I'm actually a breakup specialist. And so <laughs> what I've seen is just that modern day dating leads to breakups that are even more challenging. Um, because you're in more contact and more connected with people due to social media than you were ever before. And what we know from research is that you're basically addicted to your partner. And when you go through a breakup, you withdraw from your ex similar to the way that you might withdraw from drugs or alcohol. So every time you see your ex pop up on Instagram or in a friend's Snapchat unexpectedly, you're triggered emotionally and it sets you back in your healing process. And so I actually talk about this breakup issue as well as other millennial and modern day dating trends in uh, my book that's coming up called Breaking Up and Bouncing Back. So I think, you know, as time goes on, we'll definitely see more millennial trends in dating. Now, speaking of books, you have an ebook called Love Successfully. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that book and uh, what's in store for people that uh, go to take a look at it? Absolutely. So my book, Love Successfully, 10 Secrets You Need to Know Right Now, is a free ebook that you can just download on my website. And it goes over kind of the secret ingredients that it takes to cook up a happy love life. So this is based on my couples therapy work, clinical tools and strategies that I go over in session with clients that I've kind of given you this guide and laid it right out there for you, some really important tips and tools and strategies so that you can really create the relationship that you've always desired. That's awesome. Now, uh, before we depart, I just have to know, on a day like today, someone like you, uh, do you have plans? Is your Valentine's Day set up for a spectacular finish? So my Valentine's Day kicked off with a spectacular start. I'm married and my husband got me um, 24 roses as well as he literally bought me a star. Oh, in wow. In Sagittarius that he named Dynamo Sam, which is the nickname he gave me on our second date. <laughs> we kind of have like a, a thing about stars when we were dating early on. He told me, I thought it was a cheesy line that he said, when I'm with you, I see stars. And I kind of played it off, but he got upset because he was saying, I'm being really genuine and authentic. And I don't appreciate, you know, just assuming that I'm a player or someone talking smooth lines. I really like you. And I thought that was so sweet. And so it kind of, uh, 
played out in our val- his Valentine's Day gift this year, which is extremely thoughtful and, and sweet of him. That's awesome. Congratulations. You have your own star now. That's, that's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, I know. Dynamo Sam. <laughs> he, uh, he's giving you the universe. Bless yeah, that I man. That. He does every day. I can't imagine I what it... Other people find that. <laughs> yes, I can't imagine what it must be like uh, to be married to this love expert, uh, because you, he probably feels like he's being analyzed all the time. Does he feel that way? Uh, he, he jokes about it a lot, but he actually, <laughs> I say he has the highest emotional intelligence out of any guy I've ever met. And so he will sit down, I'll write an article and he'll read it over and discuss it with me. And we'll talk about the trends we see in dating and relationships. And he really is, you know, not just a life partner, but a business partner in a sense. So, uh, he, he is probably better than average in terms of being able to handle all of my analytics and, uh, <laughs> love advice. Sounds like a great partner to have. Samantha Burns, thank you so much for being a part of the Millennial Report today. You can check out SamanthaLoveSuccessfully.com. You can check out her ebook there of the same name as well. Uh, I'm grateful for your time, and I wish you a very happy Valentine's Day.